Hi everyone, how's everybody doing? I hope you're doing great wherever you are. And um, for today's video, well, I'm actually creating this video just to close out my brush season. And I think it was a good idea to actually talk about these brushes from Hagohodo. Um, although they are not new to my collection, I've had this since 2018. So I guess it's a good idea. Well, I thought it was a good idea that I'm going to talk about um, how I enjoyed using these brushes and maybe I can also show you guys um, what I use them for. Um, I'm sure you've seen me use this um, every so often in some of my videos and I even like uh, presented some of these brushes in like uh, my favorite face brush video or like my favorite um, eyeshadow brush video. But I can't really remember because that was like over a year ago and um, I just thought that it was a good idea to talk about these brushes from Hakuhodo or maybe Hakuhodo in general because um, they are not quite accessible. They're not readily available to be bought in most uh, brush retailers. If you want to get Hakuhodo brushes, you would either have to go to their um, Japanese website or their Amer American website. And they actually de deliver worldwide, so um, it's actually okay, but it's not as easily accessible as maybe like Chikuhodo, Mizuho, or Kuyudo. Like these are really popular brush brands in Japan because you can just get them off of like various brush retailers um, on the web. So it kind of makes these Hakuhodo brushes to be a little bit like, you know, um, hard to get and it adds to their um, certain type of mystery and also like it puts them at a much more different level in terms of exclusivity and luxury. Now I'm actually doing this video a little bit later in the day. It's because um, there was a lot of activity going on here this morning and um, again I'm shooting against natural light because I actually prefer to shoot makeup videos um, under natural light because it just shows a true color of my skin and uh, with that being said i just hope that it doesn't get too overcast although the clouds again are starting to roll in um, i just hope that it doesn't get too dark and we still have this very nice natural light going on in today's video so these very beautiful brushes that we have here today as you can see how well the light reflects of the ferrule it's so beautiful um, i actually bought this in the hakuhodo hiroshima head office in Kumano when I went there during the brush festival back in 2018. Now I didn't go there during the brush festival because during the brush festival it was closed but I actually went there um, two days after the brush festival and I'm actually quite surprised that I was actually able to find their um, head office there because I had to ride a local bus to get there. It was a very nice adventure and I had a very nice walk to their um, head office and it was very beautiful there it was like I was like I was like in brush heaven when I got there I didn't really have the budget to um, like you know go all out in purchasing brushes so when I went there I decided to purchase brushes that I needed at the time and also some brushes that I was very curious about so what I have are these six brushes that I have from their S100 Vermilion Handled Series. So this is their flagship brush that they sell at a very premium price point. Now, um, the most wonderful thing about these brushes is that I love the color of the handles of these brushes. Now, as you can see, it's actually the color of Vermilion. And if you are into Japanese tradition and Japanese culture, you would realize that the color of these handles is actually a reflection of the color that you see on their tori. So tori are actually gates that you see um, in temples. So um, you, they, I'm going to try to insert a few pictures here. Like if you go to Hiroshima, if you go to Miyajima Island, there's a very nice vermilion colored tori um, on the water. And also if you go to Kyoto and if you go to the temple named Fushimi Inari Taisha, um, this is the one that has a thousand gates that line the walkway if you want to go up the mountain. And if you haven't been there, if you have seen uh, Memoirs of a Geisha, there is a scene there wherein little Chiyo, the character, is actually running through orange colored gates. So those are actually Tori gates and that's the color of Vermilion. And that's the color that we see here on the handles. Now this also makes these brushes a little bit expensive because um, it's actually um, quite difficult to paint this kind of color on brush handles. Now, um, I can't seem to remember at the top of my mind um, what the handles are made of, if they're made of maple, but um, as you guys can see here, it's very, very beautiful and it's actually well made. Now, um, 
The odd thing with the S100 series from Chikohodo is that there is an angle here at the very end of the brush handles. Now, I was a little bit surprised by this type of um, brush handle design because I haven't seen it um, done in any other brushes before. And I was a little bit worried also because like, you know, chipping might happen because it's, a very, it's at a very odd angle, like especially when you uh, want to put it on a brush stand or on a cup or something like that. The bottom here will actually like, you know, hit um, whatever receptacle that you're using to um, put your brushes on. And one other thing also, uh, if you guys can see here at the bottom of this brush, um, there's actually some chipping that happened. Now, I can't, seem, I can't seem to remember what caused this chipping. It's either it might have fallen at a bad angle. But um, truthfully, you know, it's no big deal. Um, it just shows you guys how strong and resilient um, the brush handles are actually made and how it's painted and how it's coated. Now, if we just look at the brush handle, as you guys can see here, it's a very nice vermilion color. And the name Hakuhodo is, um, I think it's a little, it's carved a little bit and it's also stamped with, go, um, with gold. As you guys have noticed, eventually after continuously using these brushes, um, the label actually fades. Now, the other wonderful thing about these brushes is that look at the gold plated ferrule that we see here. Now this is actually made of brass, so which is actually great because brass like has, um, it's like a copper alloy. And copper is known to have antimicrobial capability. So at least we all know that whatever lands here um, actually doesn't have um, the opportunity to fester and to grow like, you know, bacteria, molds, growths, whatever. So um, it's like a sort of like a self-cleaning type of a metal that they use for the ferrules. Now, speaking of the ferrules, this is also one of the reasons why this brush is also so expensive because this is gold plated. Now, um, it's very reflective, very beautiful, and um, this has a seamless crimp on the ferrule and it has a very nice crimp here as you near the brace of the brush head. Now the brushes actually have a substantial weight to it. Of course, you know, the weight depends on how big or small the brushes are, but it's quite even. And um, if you notice the handle here, it's not, um, the width of the handle is not um, the same all throughout. It's actually thicker at the base. So that in itself actually like, you know, creates a very nice even weight that's distributed throughout the brush and it lays very well on the hands. So I really like this brush for that. Okay, so one of the main reasons why I decided to purchase the S100 Vermilion handles from Hakuhodo is because when I went to the Hiroshima head office, I said to myself, you know, I'm here, I might as well purchase their top line brushes. And that's the main reason why I decided to get this. Although um, I didn't get any of the powder brushes, which now on hindsight, I'm like kicking myself because you know, I should have gotten like at least a number of um, powder brushes, but truthfully, they were very expensive. And at the time, I didn't really use powder brushes much. When I was applying powder on the face, I would use a sponge. Now, I've said this before. Now, um, what I decided to get instead were a blush brush, a highlighting brush, and four eyeshadow brushes. Now, the main reasons why I decided to get these brushes is because um, at the time, these were the brushes that I needed to replace in my brush kit. All right, so before I talk about the brushes individually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little, very thin layer of foundation on, um, just so that we have a very nice base. And I'm just gonna speed up the process so that you know it doesn't like lengthen this video way too much. All right, so I have a very thin layer of foundation down and I actually used my, you know, Maybelline Fit Me. I love this. Um, this is a natural 220 and I used my new, newish um, Sonia G um, foundation brush. This is her, I forgot the name, classic base. So I reviewed this recently during the early, during the first few weeks of September. So if you guys are interested to hear my thoughts on the relatively new release of Sonia G's Fusion Brushes. I'm going to put a link down in the description box and you can go and check that out. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about the brushes one by one and I'm going to show you guys the brushes as I continue to complete my makeup look. And I'm going to be starting by using this brush and this is the S139 brush. 
Now, this 139 brush actually has an older sister, and it is called the S132 brush. So as you guys can see, the brush heads are very different in terms of length, but as you guys can see, they have the same type of thickness, especially here at the belly, and they taper into this very nice, like, you know, circular brush head, which I actually like. Now, the brush head of these two brushes are actually made of weasel hair. Now, the great thing about weasel hair is that you can use this for a variety of formulas. So, I have actually been using these two brushes um, for powder eyeshadow, cream eyeshadow, concealer application, things like that. So um, it's actually very, very versatile. And I actually am surprised about how good they apply products. And I'm actually also um, grateful that they that I can use these two brushes for a variety of um, formulations. Now what I'm going to do is that um, I actually do not want to use the S, what's this, the S132 for concealer application because I want to use this for eyeshadow application um, a little bit later down the line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the S139 for concealer application today. Okay, so I have here some of my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and I'm just going to load the brush with it and I'm going to use this to apply the concealer in my under eye area and I'm just going to blend it out. Now what I like about this brush is that um, it actually blends out the colors extremely well and it adds a very nice layer on the skin and one other thing also it's very very soft so if you have sensitive skin especially around the under eye area this is a very nice brush to use. Now, I actually rarely use this brush for concealer application because I have found that I enjoy using this for a lipstick application. Now, um, I actually use this on um, my Lisa Eldridge Velvet Matte Lipstick video review. So I'm going to put the link down in the description box so that you can see me use this brush. And you can assess it for yourself if you actually, like, you know, um, want to use this brush for that but truthfully like you know you can use this in any way that you want to all right and, and I'm just going to apply this also in my left under eye area and I'm just going to spread it now um, although I use this for a variety of formulations um, I actually do not use these two um, brushes for long wear types of formulas like example for eyeshadows I don't use this with the Revlon color stay because those formulas those eyeshadows really really stick the pigments really stick to the brush head so it's it becomes quite difficult to clean now also with um like you know concealers those long wear type of concealers i do not use this for that because i just don't want to have trouble um cleaning out the brush heads and i also want to make sure that the brush heads actually you know last a long time with me All right, so that's my concealer down, and I'm just going to apply some of the concealer here around my problem areas where I'm usually red, so that's around the nostrils here, and maybe in some spots where I have some blemishes. All right, so that's my under eye concealer. Now, before I move on to my next makeup application, um, one other thing that I like using this brush for is that when I want to apply a much more precise application of highlighter, I use this. So I'm just going to do that. And I'm loading the brush here with some product from Lisa Eldridge's um, Elevated Glow Highlighter. And I'm just applying it here in my brow bone area. And maybe I can apply here on the very topmost portion of my cheekbones and here as well. All right, next, what we have here is the S110 brush, and this is the blush brush. Now, um, the main reason why I decided to get this brush is because I like the shape of the brush head here, and I like the size of it. As you guys can see here, it has, like, you know, if you look at it from the top portion, it's actually, like, it's not round, but it's ovoid. And maybe this might have a much more rounder brush head shape um, if I don't keep this in a brush net. So maybe if this blooms extensively, this will end up having a very rounded, brush head design but um, you know for me I'm fine with this shape uh, if we tilt this we can see that it has a much more paddle like design and with this brush I've actually realized that it actually picks up a strong amount of coloration and pigment so um, before I use blush what I want to do is I actually want to use this for applying a very thin layer of um, translucent powder on the face okay so it has loaded here and I'm just going to pat it 
on my skin. Okay, I'm actually very careful on how much powder I load because this will pick up a ton of um, product mainly because the brush head is actually very, very small. So they're bunched together, so they will actually pick up more product. So, but the great thing about this brush is that um, it's actually quite resilient as well. As you guys can see, it's actually able to blend out powder extremely well on the skin. It's actually able to buff out the powder extremely well as well. And that's the reason why I like using blush brushes for applying powder, because sometimes if I apply too much powder in one area, if I just take, you know, buff the brush head it's actually able to mix and blend out and buff out powder extremely well on the skin now before i move on to blush application um, i actually like using this brush when i want to apply a much more precise and a much more fuller coverage powder on my skin like for example my mac nc 35 um, in studio fix i use this brush and i just load the brush head with a little bit of the product and if I want to mattify, or if I want to add more powder in a specific area, like in this part of my face where I'm usually oily, I use this brush and I just use it in a nice patting motion. And it actually applies a very nice, like, you know, well blended, even powder application on my cheeks, as you can see, like, you know, so it's a much more fuller finish now, very matte. So it's actually a little bit flatter. Okay, let's also do that here. And that's one thing that I like about using smaller brush heads. It actually gives you the opportunity to um, apply product in a much more specific area of the face. All right, now let's go on to blush application. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to remove the excess powder on the brush head here. And I'm just rubbing it lightly on a microfiber towel just to remove any color. And I'm going to be using this blush from Laura Mercier and it's called Bellini. And I actually like using this brush for matte blush formulas. It's so great. And I actually like loading the brush head here on the side um, because I like how it tapers. And it actually gives me the ability to be more precise with my um, blush application. So I'm just tapping the color here on my cheeks and I'm blending it all so gently. So this brush actually gives you the ability to blend out matte blushes extremely well. Like you know, like the belly here is so full, it's so sturdy, it's very resilient. So it really helps you when you are blending out the color and the product on the cheeks. Alright, so let's do the other side here. Now I actually don't like using this brush for like bronzer application because it's just too small and it's too dense. I actually prefer a much more rounder and a fluffier and an airier brush. Like for example, my um, Chikohodo F03 brush. That's a good brush to use. Or even like the F01, the biggest brush on the Chikohodo F0 series line. I also like using my Yachio brushes for that. And I also like using one of my um, Makie brush series from Chikohodo. Because if I use this brush for bronzer or contour application, it's going to create a very strong application of color in my cheeks and I really don't like that. I prefer, again, to use very light layers and build on the intensity that I want. If I want to add a topper, um, example, if I want to use this blush here, I can actually use this brush for that. Um, just to add a very nice hint and pop of color. But again, I'm very careful because this is a very dense brush. So this will not pick up the shimmer on these types of blushes, but this will pick up the pigment. So as you guys can see here, the color is starting to intensify. But it's also giving us a very nice hint of shimmer going on. So if you have like a very nice hard pressed blush powder like this and you like the color you like the pigmentation this brush can really help you to apply that color okay the next brush that we have here is the s113 brush now if you guys can see here in comparison to my s110 brush um, the brush heads are very different in design and of course in the size and um, I've actually talked about this brush in a video before like I did a year ago like my favorite brushes to use for blush and highlighter so I actually like to use this for applying highlighters on my skin but I don't want to do that now because I've already done it before but instead I want to show you guys that I actually also like to use this when I want to apply finishing powders on my face like for example um, I actually like the size because it fits into this edit mini palette from um, 
hourglass so um this is the finishing powder and you know like because of instagram um and also like the advent of filters and telephones there's this clamor when you're doing makeup that you have to have this like very perfect like you know very light reflective very even skin although it looks very very fake but it is such a trend now and this brush really helps me if i want to apply finishing powder in the under eye area here and even here and just to blend it and the great thing that i have noticed with this brush is that um, because of the size of it it's not and also it's not very very dense it's not very very compact but it actually picks up a very sheer amount of product so if you have a lot of like you know finishing powders or highlighting powders and if you find that sometimes um, when you do, when you use a different brush and it applies too much of the shimmer this brush actually helps you to apply the correct amount of um, highlighting powders you know finishing powders on your skin and as you guys can see right now this part of my face is becoming very well illuminated and it's looking very like you know perfect and it's also looking very even and that's a great thing with like you know finishing powders like this from hourglass it really helps in creating that illusion of having a very like you know bright and perfect under eye area okay so let's do the other side now oh one other thing that i forgot to talk about when i was talking about the handles of these brushes earlier is that at first i was um quite surprised on the angle that you have here but i have since like enjoyed using it because um i think i've shown you guys before like sometimes i like holding brushes this way and um the angle here of at the very end of the brush actually has a very nice way of like anchoring itself sorry here on my hand and i really like that it just offers me more um stability and it really helps me to be more precise with my makeup application all right, and the next brush that we have here is the S132 brush, and this is the older sister of the brush that I used earlier to apply concealer in my under eye area. Now, this is a multi-use brush. I really love it, but um, what I want to show you guys today is that um, when I use this brush for powders, um, it actually creates a very much more pearlescent and well-blended, very thinned out color on my eyelids one other thing by the way um, i actually like using this brush more when i use um, matte eyeshadow colors because it just has the a nice ability of actually blending out the edges extremely well but um for today i want to use this color from the viseart petit pro uh, 2 palette so i'm just loading the color here at the tip of the brush here and let me just angle myself properly and I'm just applying the color here all over my eyelid see it's still able to apply a very like you know high impact kind of color and I'm just using a tapping motion to build the coverage all over my eyelid now I'm not using an eye base today because I just want to show you guys how well this brush actually picks up pigment. Okay, I'm just removing any excess on the brush head here on a microfiber towel. And I'm just gonna use this to blend out the edges. So it really helps in creating a very nice, like, you know, soft, well-applied eyeshadow color. If you're someone who likes using, um, like, one wash of color on your eyes, this is a nice brush to have. Okay, and I'm just blending everything and I'm just like, you know, buffing out the edges. Now, um, the main reason why I was so attracted to this brush is because um, when I first started doing makeup, um, we had a lot of these types of brushes in the market. So I really had to learn how to apply eyeshadow and to blend out edges using flat brushes like this. Now the brush head is actually very very soft and it's also very resilient and um, it doesn't hurt the eye so again if you have very sensitive eye area this is a good brush to have in your collection because it doesn't really hurt like you know when you're just patting it you know dragging the brush into the crease you know it really doesn't hurt it's amazing it's a very good brush now i think you guys can see how well the brush is actually blending the color and as you guys can see the brush head is actually thinning out the pigments extremely well to the point that the pigment is actually blending very well into my like you know 
own skin. So it's creating this very nice diffuse color, very nice and faded out into my eye area. Great, right? Because like in comparison, for example, this is my Sonia G Worker 3 brush. This is the Worker 3. Yeah, um, the reason why I got this is because if we just put them side by side, it's almost the same brush head length and almost the same design in a brush head. But the Sonia G Worker 3 has just a much more fuller belly. So this will pick up a ton of pigment instantly. So as you guys can see here, it has picked up so much pigment. And if we just load the brush on my eyelid, so that you can see like the difference in intensity of the color. All right, I'm just blending out the edges and creating the shape that I want and need. Okay, so I'm actually gonna move closer so that you guys can see my point. Now, I actually used one color on my eyes today, but I used two different brushes, right? So as you guys can see, and if you just can compare, the Worker 3 brush of Sonia G delivers a much more stronger impact of color, while the S132 from Hakuhodo um, delivers a much more pearlescent type of eyeshadow color. And that's actually the appeal of this brush because um, it actually helps you to build the color that you want to the intensity that you want. But the great thing with the S132 brush is that it actually doesn't diminish or it actually helps you to actually show the other pigments and the other colors that's in the eyeshadow that you're using. So for example, here you can actually see the violet tones coming out while here it's, it looks like it's red. The violet is not really coming out much. The pink is not really coming out. It's just like one full impact of color. But here on this eye where I use the S132 brush, it's actually showing you a much more um, gradiated kind of color application on the eyelid. All right, so the next brush I have here is the S142 brush. And as you guys can see here, um, this is a very nice brush that you can use to actually blend out colors on the eyes. Now this is made of blue squirrel, so it's very, very soft. And if you have um, very, again, delicate eye area, and if you have like, you know, a lot of sensitivity when you're applying colors in the eyes, using this brush can really help in like, you know, minimizing the sensitivity. Now what attracted me to this brush is that um, for the longest time back when I started one of my most favorite brush to use is this ponytail brush from Laura Mercier and now that it's side by side you guys can see that they're almost the same but the fullness of the belly is actually quite different now although the S142 brush is smaller and less dense this actually picks up a ton of colors um, from the pan so again just be very careful with that and um, I actually like to use this brush when I just want to blend out colors on my crease like for example if I want to add a much more lighter color which I'm doing right now it really fits well into my socket line area and it really helps me to blend out like you know matte eyeshadows extremely well on the eyes and it feels very comfortable on the eyes I do have to say so let me just try to blend the edges out here now because this brush is actually made of blue squirrel you might have some difficulty in blending out um, eyeshadow colors that you've already applied if you know if you want to fully blend it out you might have some trouble because the brush head is actually very 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 soft you might be able to like you know blend out edges for this but um, if you want you, ha you would actually have to pick up uh, a color on your pan and then you have to apply that and you have to use that color to blend out the edges of the eyeshadow that I applied before that. Okay, so that's just what I'm doing right now. I'm just blending the color that I picked up on the pan and I'm using that color to blend out the edges. Okay, and the last brush that we're going to be talking about is the S144 brush. And as you guys can see here, this is the brush that I actually use when I want to apply strong colors on the lash line area. Now, um, my only problem with this brush is that the bristle is actually too long for me because I actually prefer a much more shorter bristled um, smudge brush when I'm applying um, products on my um, lash line area. Now this brush is actually made of um, tamagets so it's made from a um, certain kind of a cat and it's very very soft on the eyes and even if the brush head is actually very soft you're actually quite surprised on how much pigment this brush can actually pick up from the pan and apply on the eyelid. So I'm just applying this matte eyeshadow color onto my lash line. See? 
doing it extremely well very nice and very beautiful but if you are someone who likes to use gel eyeliners they're in pencil form um, this might not be able to help you to blend out those types of eyeliners so it's actually much more better for you to use like you know either powder eyeshadow if you want to create some intensity on your lash line this brush can really help you in doing that look at that very beautiful right but just be very careful though when you're picking up pigment from your pan using this brush because it can also cause a lot of fallout so just make sure that once you load um, the product on the brush just tap it a little bit or like you know remove some at the back of your hand so that you don't get some fallout on your face so again this is very very soft and very gentle on the eye and it applies colors extremely well I'm, I'm so amazed by it actually all right now what I'm doing is I'm applying some color on my lower lash line area and I'm just removing some of the color the back of my hand and I'm just going to blend it into my upper eyelid so that we have a much more like, you know cohesive color application and I'm also going to do that here on my other eye so this brush actually does a very nice job of you know giving a very nice precise application of color and it's very comfortable to use in your like lower lash line and your upper lash line so again this is like a nice brush to have if you are someone who has very sensitive eyes or if you are someone who works with people who have very sensitive eyes so I keep this brush in my kit just for that reason all right so it's actually turning out to be a very nice sooty smoky red eye <laughs> But I'm actually quite happy on how these brushes performed. Um, I'm also happy on how, like, especially, you know, how multi-use these two brushes can be. I really love that. And um, I'm actually, I'm hoping that in the future when I'm able to go back to Japan, I actually want to go back and visit um, their um, either flagship store in Kyoto or their main um, head office in Hiroshima and maybe pick up a few more um, brushes so that I can have some in my collection. Now if you want to see more of the S100 um, Vermilion handles from Chico Hodo, you can visit their website and you can see the entire range for yourself. Now um, there's also like an S100 series with black handles. Now those are relatively cheaper than the Vermilion handles but they use the same brush heads. Um, it's only the handles that's quite different and if you find the S100 black handles to be a little bit more expensive then check out their base line because that's going to be much more affordable um, especially if you are someone who's starting out um, in the industry or if you're someone who's starting to collect um, food brushes um, at this time now I haven't ordered from Hakuhodo yet like on their um, American website and also on their Japanese website now um, the American website um, it doesn't list down all of the brushes in their collection because there are some brushes that are not allowed to be sold in America right if you are interested go to their Japanese website I'm gonna put a link down on the description box and then um, it's automatic it just translate like Google translates the website automatically into English so um, you can see and you can compare and you can also check out which brushes um, are available there all right so I guess that's it for me today this is how I use these brushes from Hakuhodo I know it's a very limited amount of um, brushes from them but if you have been interested and if you have been like, you know curious about how some of these brushes work I hope that this video has proved helpful and insightful now if you have any more questions about how I use these brushes or any other products that I use on the video today please leave them down at the comments box and let's have a conversation about it all right thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being here and I hope that you're having a good day wherever you are Bye.